Armando Hasurugan biology and medicine videos, uh, please make sure to subscribe. Join the forum and group for the latest videos. Visit Facebook Armando Hasurugan. Um, make sure to like. And here you can also ask questions, answer questions if you can, please, and post some interesting things such as your artworks, any artworks. And you can also change the quality settings to the highest one for better graphics. Now this is going to be a short video on membrane dynamics and mobility of membrane components. So how components within the cell membrane move around. We talked about cholesterol before moving around, now we can talk about the lipids moving around. So membrane lipid dynamics. So here I'll draw the lipid bilayer again. We have um, the extracellular fluid here outside and the intracellular fluid the inside. So there are two mechanisms of membrane lipid dynamics. There's uncatalyzed and there's catalyzed. Uncatalyzed, well, in uncatalyzed, we have what's called the trans bilayer diffusion, also called flip-flop, which is a funny name. And this process is actually very slow and takes days. So this is essentially when a lipid from one layer moves to another layer. The second type of uncatalyzed uh, movement dynamics is what's called the lateral diffusion and this process is very fast because the lipid structure essentially moves within the same plane on the same layer and that is why it is fast. Now let's look at the catalyzed uh, lip membrane lipid dynamics which uses proteins enzymes to move lipids from one layer to the other which will obviously lower the activation energy. So this process will be faster than the trans bilayer diffusion process, which is very slow. So for example, if we have the extracellular fluid here, the enzyme flippase, which is a, the process also called flippase, requires ATP and essentially moves a lipid on the outer leaflet to the inner leaflet. So outer to inner leaflet. And as mentioned, it requires ATP. The second requires floppase, the enzyme floppase, the protein, the process. And this is uh, the reverse of flippase. This is when the lipid in the inner leaflet moves to the outer leaflet with the help of this protein. And this process also requires ATP. The last is called scramblease. And this is a very interesting name, but essentially there's an exchange. A lipid on the inner leaflet moves to the outer leaflet, and at the same time, a lipid on the outer leaflet moves to the inner leaflet. Now, there are other types of movements within uh, the membrane structure. If we have a look on the top of a uh, membrane, for, uh, for example, so like a bird's eye view, and we zoom into this structure, the lipid membrane will look like this from the top view. So here's a top view of the membrane. Now, there are two things I want to point out here. One is that the lipid can move around on the same plane. And this is sort of like lateral diffusion from the uncatalyzed version, but essentially it can move anywhere within the same layer, around the same plane. And two, the lipid itself can rotate, obviously, because it is in constant motion. And finally, I would like to mention that the fatty acid chain can actually flex, can move around, because there's a sort of a fluid environment within the bilayer. Interesting. Now let's talk about how membrane fluidity, fluidity itself is influenced. Now, what influences membrane fluidity, in, most importantly, the two, is temperature and also the fatty acid composition. What I mean by this is the fatty acid length, for example, or if they contain unsaturate, unsaturated double bonds. So to, do, to, sh to show you an example, I'd like to draw you two uh, membrane bilayers. So the interior consists of some form of fluid and it's in constant motion. So if you can imagine that the fatty acid chain is just moving within the bilayer. And this is also enhanced with increased temperature. And also an uh, important feature is the fatty acid composition. Because if you have unsaturated fatty acids, it's more uh, flexible because it melts quicker than saturated fatty acids. Just think about it. Now, if we, for example, decrease the temperature of, uh, within the uh, membrane, this will cause the whole structure to stiffen, you can say. And so it's not as fluid. And this state is called a paracrystalline state. And it changes the membrane, uh, cell membrane length 
in some way to become longer because it's stiff. Now, other things that influence membrane fluidity is the phospholipid classes, such as if there's heaps of phosphatidylcholines, phosphatidylserines, or phosphatidylinositols. Osterols can also influence this, and lipid protein ratio, if there's a lot of proteins if, or if there's a lot of lipids within the cell membrane. Now, let's talk more about the membrane fluidity and what it's influenced by, and look at other factors, such as environmental conditions. And as mentioned before, temperature plays a vital role. In the environment and we also have the ionic strength within uh, within the area whether there's a lot of ions around the acidity if there's solvents present such as ethanol and if there's free radical and oxygens which can potentially damage the membrane a second important uh, influencer is the protect protect protectant molecules uh, and this will help obviously protect the membrane and also the cells energy status and metabolism so whether the cell needs energy and so this influences uh, the permeability, etc. And another important thing, which is also to do with basically everything that I just mentioned, is membrane proteins. Because membrane proteins are enzymes, transporters, and also essentially increases permeability of certain ions, and basically helps maintain the membrane structure. It has a vital role in protecting the membrane structure as well. So membrane proteins. Now the fluidity must be optimal for the function of membrane proteins. And we'll look into membrane proteins in the next video in more detail. But let's just look at a quick overview. What are membrane proteins? Well, they can be transporters, they can be receptors, energy transducers, they can be enzymes, and obviously they can influence permeability. So this video was talking about membrane dynamics and lipid membrane dynamics. Uh, next video, we'll look at the membrane proteins in more uh, greater detail. Uh, please like, comment, and subscribe. Shankyol.